and welcome back to part four of the Mo Ho Ho Christmas Stocking Crochet Along. So in this thrilling installment, I'm going to show you how to join them all together to create your Christmas stocking shape. Now it is a little bit confusing and it involves maths, so I'm obviously at a very big disadvantage, um, but we'll see what we can get done. So I have made this handy diagram, which I've put on Facebook for you. Now I've put the numbers on, um, on here, not on yours, because some people are using two colours and some people are using sort of old manner of different colours. So what you need to do is to think about, right, where are your numbers going to go and, and what uh, distribution are you going to have? So the way I've organised mine is that whatever I've had in the toe, if we're going off this one as our guide, the colour of the toe here, I've labelled number one. And that's there, 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 there and there, because it's the same on the reverse. So we've got one, 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 one. Okay, two I have labelled as uh, the this colour, the red on this one. So we've got red, 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 red. And three is the colour that I've got six of. So I've got five of one and two, plus a toe of one, and six of colour three. Okay, so I'll just recap that again. Colour one, you should have five hexagons and a toe piece. Da -da -da -da. Colour two, we should have five hexagons. And colour three, we should have six hexagons. Okay, so if you organise it in this way, it looks like this shape. So we're going to do it flat. And it doesn't matter whether you do right side or wrong side facing, as long as they're all the same. And we're going to start to join at the top. We're going to do the vertical, yeah, vertical seams first. And then we'll do a vertical seam here. And then we'll join these two rows together. But so that we know which is always our top row, we're going to put a stitch marker in the top of these three hexagons just to give us uh, a little helping hand. So we're going to start by joining together row one and then we'll work down the stocking like we've said. So I've got these three here. So I've got that's colour one, cream, two, the jade, the teal and one, another cream there. And what I'm going to do so that I know that these are always going to be the top bit, I'm going to just put a stitch marker just in the top peak of each one okay so that when I've joined a few together I will know where the top always is if you're struggling to find you you one chain space in your corner no, it's not particularly clear on here but there'll be four little bars four legs going into that corner space there and you want to go in between the middle two there so I've got one two there and one two on that side okay so I'm going to join these together and we're going to join them together using what's known as an alternating slip stitch so no slip knot or anything I'm going to start here I like to start on the one on the right I don't think it really matters and we're going to join in that one chain space so find your two legs there going into your corner space and then if you put your hook through there you'll find your one chain space and we're going to join in there just like we did with all the others okay we don't need to do one uh, a double or anything there or a stitch to count as your first one so I'm then going to pick up the other one we're making sure that's so on my points at the top my points at the top there and I'm going to join this corner to this corner go into the same uh, corresponding space on that one and we do a slip stitch it's a little bit fiddly these first few because they're going to want to be all wayward and all over the show so if you want to you can put a stitch marker at the top there but once you've got a couple in you'll be fine so we then need to come back and do a slip stitch over this one so we go in over here and it's a bit of a funny angle is this one you're going to want to wrap your yarn over your hook you have to kind of push your hook down that direction a bit to get it to come back through the stitch pull it through slip stitch so then we're going to do another slip stitch over in this side here slip stitch in there then we come back to the right hand side again, oh, slippy slip, in through the next one and we're going to work up each side one in one, one in the next, all the way back up to the sli uh, to the chain spaces at the top, okay, right. And what it should start to produce is this lovely rick racky wibbly border there uh, that just gives it a little bit more something something than uh, 
just a double crochet or a slip stitch seam. So I'm up to my last chain space there. So I do one in that one, one in this one here. Uh, give it a wibbly wibble. You let your first one will tighten that loop up down there, and then no slip stitch or, or, or to fasten it off at the top. Snip it off, pull it all the way through. Okay. So that was my first two joined together. So now I want to join this one on here, and it is exactly the same process. Start with the one on the right find your chain space, join your yarn, so that's the first one in that side, I then pick this one up, through there, so lip stitch, so I'll get my little tail out of the way, this first one might disappear a little bit, so make sure you hit your first one and you get your numbers right and you, they won't be a skew whiff, so one side, other side. If you're struggling to see where you've been into, if you pull it, you should be able to see where your V's are. So I've been in that one there. I know this probably just looks like navy blue blindness, but give them a rag around if you're struggling to see, because you do need to get your numbers to match up. So one, two, get my wool stuck. One, two, one. Two. 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 So last one in that side, last one in that side. Now, I know I very rarely take my own advice, but I would recommend that you sew your ends in as we go on this one because they're going, to be, they're going to end up inside the stocking and it's a bit tricky to get to them or it's a bit upsetting to turn it all inside out so if you just, and there'll be millions of them so if we just go you, just, you don't need to do these ones in two directions so we just go underneath this lovely zigzag on the other side I do think this is one of my favourite uh, seam stitches it gives you a really nice effect on both sides very nice for blankets as well so snippy snippy same again And then that's your first row joined together. So I'm then going to join my next row together and then I'll do the wibbly zigzaggy bit. Okay, so I've got that one there. So I then need to get a two, a three and a three and join those together. So I will get on that and I'll come back to you when I've joined the next three and then I can show you uh, the zigzag seam. Okay, right then I've now got my row one and my row two all done and joined together so I'm going to join these two together now you need to make sure that you're joining them in the right bit so this one needs to be offset to there so we should have the three separate colours in the middle a yellow uh, the same colours next to each other there and then alternating here and here all right so I'm going to join these together I'm going to keep these stitch markers in as well because they'll keep telling me where is the top of the stocking all right so I'm now going to turn it this way. Now we're going to do exactly the same as we were doing before. Um, it's just the same stitch. We're going to join. Let's start up there a little bit. We're going to join here and we're just going to alternate all the way up to the top of it. Okay. So I'm going to, again, I like to join on the right hand side. So I will do, stay true to my methods. So in there. Oh. In there. And then we join in, starting in the chain space over here. I'll look for your chain space, there it is. Might be quite snug your chain spaces, just give them a bit of a rag around and you'll find them. So then we're going back onto, also it's quite satisfying when you get to do a nice long seam like this. You know, don't feel quite as resentful of all the ends. So the first one, remember, oh, it's always a bit of a stiff one. In there, so then we're just working all the way along here and they should <laughs> should end up lining up uh, where your peaks are into the seams so like there to there if not you might need to just pull it back and have a little uh, give it a little wiggle and have a think about where you weren't quite on if it's only a stitch or two out then just 
pull it in and give it a fudge but if it is if you're a long way out then uh, you need to maybe pull that last seam back and just uh, have a rethink because otherwise you'll get a bumpy stocking nobody wants a bumpy stocking do they so I'm, so I'm coming up to the stitches now where I've got uh, my seam joining here now if you're doing it in a contrast colour you, you need to listen to this bit a bit more carefully if not um, then it doesn't really matter because you won't be able to see it that well so I'm going to go over here and do my last one on this side then I want to go in that same space as my yellow went in there that chain space and then I'm going to go over there Get it tight around here and then I'll go in that one there. Now it might be that after, because I've gone in the chain spaces on either side, so you just need to do a quick count. So I've got, if I go in now, I've got one, 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 and that will line up perfectly. So it's worth just having a quick check um, because if you're out a bit, then it can be a bit upsetting, like we said. Right, so. Coming down to my next trough down here. And it will, this, the joining together is a little bit arduous and you'll be like, what on earth is this? This is nonsense. And then you'll get to a certain point and you'll go, oh, let a stocking uh, as it just takes shape. When you come to the stitches where you've done your invisible join, like that one that I just did there on your hexagons, they might be a little bit tough to get through. So just give it a good... Give it a good poke in there, poke, poke, and um, it should be fine and dandy. Right, so I'm up to my chain space here, so I'm going to go in, in that one there. It does get quite sort of clumpy around these where we're going, because there's a lot of yarn in these corners. Ooh. There you go. Um, so just try and keep it, try and keep it loosey goosey where you can, but there will be times where it is, I don't know, nighty tighty. <laughs> now, if you do find yourself, just give you a little fudge. So on here, I've got one extra on this one. I've got, I can see I've only going to have one extra on that side. So all you do is. I've got one extra on here, I'm missing one on that side, so just do a little pick up in two in the same space in that one. You'll not see it, it won't bulk up or anything, um, and then that'll keep your numbers nice and straight. It does happen, um, just because of the way that, especially with your invisible joins, they can knock you off a bit, so don't worry, it's all fudgeable. Perfectly imperfect. Right, so, coming up to my chain space here. In there, oh, in oh, that wasn't it. There, in there, and then in the other side, and back over to this one here. Okay, so we'll just keep going to the end of this one, um, and then I think I'll see you when we've got the basic shape done. Because there's no point just watching me do the same thing over and over again, is there? It's what rewinds for. <laughs> so over there. You will feel a bit clunky as well when you first start doing these the right-handed on this side the um the slip stitches because they do it kind of goes against your brain a little bit but you'll be all right so in there over there in there oh, over there and i'm going to finish in there Oh no, I'm not, am I? I've got another one over here. I'm getting a bit cocky here. I forgot about that one. <laughs> right, back over here. Right, coming up to, now we're coming up to the last one. You can, if you're finding this utterly atrocious to do you could just do a normal slip, ste slip stitch seam but I recommend persevering because it really does give a lovely festive effect and it is the ultimate festive item here so give it a go right so I'm up to my last one there okay ta-da done 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 so same again 
snipped it off. So your ends in, and that's row one and two. So I've then got, let's get rid of so then we'll have a, a row three to join on there, and a row four and five and six, but I can't show you because I'll fall off the camera. Right, so I'm gonna keep joining all these together into this shape, and then I will come back to you once I've got this kind of joined and we can fold it over and to do this final sort of seam all the way down there. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, I've got now all 16 hexagons joined together. My top's up here, and I know that because I've still got my little stitch markers in up there. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to turn it over to show you how we fold it into a stocking shape. Ah. So this line here is our midpoint, so I'm going to fold that over there. Oh, stocking. This one we fold in there, we have a leg. This foot, the line that comes along the bottom here, this is the heel, and we fold the whole thing from there up. So it should be same colour to same colour, same colour to same colour, there. And this, plus this bit, is your completed stocking. So here is my recommendation for how to sew it up. Start here, and go up here, and up here, and then dirt, 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 and then you'll end up there. Rejoin here and go do 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 do, then rejoin here and go uh, 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 uh. and then you're all done. Um, so I'll not worry about showing you that much. Uh, I'm not going to show you that bit because I think you've already seen me and you've got the stitch and you know the idea. Um, so give us a shout if you've got any questions. Uh, once it's all joined together, there's only one more part to go, part five. And in that one, we're going to do our little bibbidi bobbidi border. Let me show you around the top. Oh, it's under everything. Oh, my Lord. So we're going to do this little um, pico border around the top here. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to make a twisted braid and fancy, fancy pom-poms. Um, so then once we've got those on, that'll be all fully completed. Right, give us a shout if you've got any questions, as ever. And um, I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.